morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the vlog. Today is day one of preseason. I am, as you can see from the last video, in a new Airbnb, but this is the team that I will be with for the next little while, um, the next year, hopefully, signing a contract very soon. So I can't say where it is yet, uh, but in the new Airbnb, it's fantastic. Let's hop straight into the video. It's gonna be a beautiful day. I think we have two training sessions. So yeah, we'll see what happens. Let's hop into it. So for me, these videos are really tough because I can't really show you any details of where I am like that would give me away until I actually sign the paperwork. So I've already moved about three quarters of my stuff and my beautiful wife is bringing the rest of the stuff plus the car over um, to move to this new city. And so my thought process is for today, what I wanted to do was explain um, number one, how I got this connection, and number two, how I was able to get in front of the coach and make a really, really good impression. So over the course of this video, I'm gonna explain in a few different ways sort of how this process started and hopefully how uh, I can give you guys tips and tricks on how to make the best impression for the coach who you're trying to impress and presumably get on that team. All right, so first things first, how did I get this connection? These guys. So, oh, oops, that way. <laughs> there you go. So they were able to get video from the Tulsa combine that I went to and then the Chattanooga combine that I went to and send it to the coach, uh, several different coaches in uh, NISA, USL1, USL Championship, and then a couple teams over in Finland. As I mentioned in a previous video, I think a couple weeks ago, that uh, they finished tiers were also what I was looking at as well. Chattanooga was interested, I think, uh, from the trial, but that's because they actually saw me in person. And then there were two other teams that had seen my video and they said, we want that guy. And so one of those teams is where I am right now. And so that's all to say that connections are super important and film and it's really important to network. You don't have to have an agent. It's really helpful. I tell guys all the time, I'm paying OPSM as a client of theirs, right? As an athlete, pro athlete of theirs for their connections, for their network, and that helps me move forward in my career so that I can um, get you know, better teams, higher level connections, higher level teams looking at me. And obviously none of this happens without being a good player and good habits off the field too. So that's my first tip is look for connections and get a highlight video. Those things are super, super important. Uh, let me know down in the comments below if you want me to do a video about making a video like about a highlight video, I think that might be really helpful or we can do like a live YouTube live or something like that where you guys can come in and I can basically make my own highlight video and go through the entire process. All right guys, time to get to training. Ooh, it's bright. And in a brilliant sequence of events, I'm in a Prius, which is lovely. Love that for me. All right, fam, I'm about to pull up to the facility. It is day one of preseason, training number one of what will turn out to be an incredible opportunity, an incredible season. After this, we'll talk about things that I did to make sure that this coach wanted me. Let's get it, baby. So excited. Preseason, here we go. I love you. I'm going to fucking see you. <laughs> love you too. I'll see you soon. Mwah. Bye. All right, fam. So, first training done. It is currently 12.30 in the early afternoon. We have training at 9.30 p.m. tonight. I think we have a game, so it's another scrimmage. Uh, the facility, because it's so cold here, the indoor facility that we use is used also by the youth club. And so when that training happens, obviously we can't have... Um, yeah, we can't have our own training session on that big field. So in that case, we train much later in the evening and then we'll do like a noon session tomorrow instead of like a 10 a.m. session. Did some warm up. We did a little bit of 
small-sided possession with one touch and two touch, and then we moved into a small-sided game, and then we moved into like a 9v9 game to really get flow in and get that, um, get that positions sorted out. So it's been super fun, super, super fun. I got, I'm not, I can't show you, uh, maybe I can show you, uh, how do I do this? Well, it's white, so there you go. So I got a white training kit, can't show you anything on it, unfortunately, but I got a white training kit. I can't wait to do a, a reveal once I sign the paperwork. I promise, I promise, I promise. I'll, I'll share it with you guys. Yeah, it's so exciting. New team, new preseason, new goals, huge aspirations. We're gonna kick ass this season. Time to get some food at home. I'm really hungry. I am just driving home and listening to a the Fozcast. Shout out to uh, goalkeeper Ben Foster, who's got his own YouTube channel, The Cycling GK, and his podcast about how sports psychology is changing the game is really fantastic. You guys should definitely check it out. Uh, sports psychology is something that I am really passionate about, really stoked about, and it is something that I'm considering going into after all the soccer stuff is done, after my soccer career is over. Uh, and I just think the field is fantastic, and it is one piece that is often neglected is that mindset piece so we I've talked a bunch about the be awesome mindset that I put together that is part of it and then obviously looking at performance psychology is a huge piece of an athlete's success and fulfilling the athlete's potential I think a lot of people get stuck in the sort of in that space of well I'm not broken so why do I need fixing no 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 that's not the point you're going from good to great great book by the way uh, and, and that's what you have to have, that always constantly improving mindset, always constantly looking to get better and looking to get in a place of constant high performance. Home, sweet home, food time. I'm gonna cook some chicken and rice. Who would have known? <clears throat> so one of the things that helps me to win the confidence of a coach, and that can be both from the perspective of somebody who I'm already signed with and playing with, or it can be somebody who I'm trying out with. Uh, tip number one is be a leader. Now, being a leader is a sort of blanket statement for a couple different things. So leadership incorporates leading by example. It incorporates being really positive to your teammates. So somebody makes a mistake, you're not bashing them. You're saying, no worries, next one, get the next one, whatever, whatever that means for you. Um, ah. Let's go. And then the other thing is making the correct decisions. So making the correct decisions on the pitch, and it's not something you need to stress over necessarily, uh, but making the correct decisions when you're passing the ball, when you're one v you know three in the back, do I go one v three? Okay, if I have a shooting opportunity, sure. But do I have the wherewithal to go, nope, okay, cool, turn to the side, turn to the side, try to make a pass and then support, or try to play it backwards so that you can just keep the ball, Those that type of like being a leader. So leading by example in my book is super, super important. Um, so leadership is something that has come pretty natural to me, but it was from an amazing place. I had a mentor who really taught me how to be that courageous leader taught me how to be the person who was shouting on the field and being positive, but also, you know, not just being loud, making very intentional commands to people while I'm on the pitch. So a big part of that confidence actually comes down to not really caring what other people think of you. And I know this is gonna sound kind of crazy, uh, but the less you spend thinking about what the coach is gonna think of you, what players are gonna think of you, the better you perform. And here's my reasoning behind that. So in the past, when I've gotten really nervous on a pitch, like, oh my God, don't screw up, don't screw up, don't screw up, that's when I play my worst. When I'm playing my best, 
is when I'm not thinking at all about what the other team thinks of me, I don't care what the other coach thinks of me, Honestly, if I'm at a tryout, who cares because I'm going to have more opportunities. Yep, that's self-confidence, but it's also a mindset where you go in and you say, I'm not going to worry about the judgments of other people because that's a waste of my energy thinking about what other people are going to think of me. My priority in this particular situation, i.e. on the pitch while I'm trialing, uh, yes, in order to impress the coach, but... I'm here to do my thing and show what I have. And when I play best is when I am not worried at all about what anyone else thinks of me. So the biggest advice I can give you guys is play like you have nothing to lose and always be in that commanding situation like we're talking about, in that leadership situation. All I'm thinking about is how can I make my teammate look better and how can I put him in a place where he can succeed? We had a guy today... And, you know, hopefully, yeah, anyway, we had a guy today at training who was definitely not at the level. He was trialing at the team. He, he, he's not signed yet. It was his first day. And he really wasn't at the level. But it's not my decision whether or not another trialist is good or bad. Why would I complain about that? Instead, let's put him in a position. Let's command him into a certain position. Let's make him look good. Let's make him feel like he's a part of the team right away. And if the coach decides to sign him or not sign him, it doesn't matter to me. This is a job. This is a profession. And what I would recommend to you guys is when you go into those things, don't worry about whether a guy is signed, whether a guy is not signed. Be really confident in who you are and your playing style, and you'll find the coach that wants you. The first trial you go to, you may do that, and the coach is like, stop talking. Don't do that. Listen to the other players. Okay, cool. But you may end up like a, like me in, in this new amazing place that you might end up in a situation where you do that and you're not telling anybody off. Again, I'm not telling you to argue. What I'm saying is be super, be conscious, instructive, and positive. And once you do that, you have a coach, like the one here, where he says, that's brilliant, that's amazing, I want you. Something to think about. Now, if this doesn't look delicious, I don't know what planet you're from, but this is Spanish rice with corn and pepper and quinoa and brown rice with some other stuff in it. And then the chicken that I made that you guys saw earlier, fantastic post-workout meal. Gonna down this, probably nap for like half an hour, hopefully shower. It is Champions League day. It is Manchester United sporting and, or Manchester United, LOL. They haven't been in the Champions League in so long. <laughs> Uh, Manchester City and Sporting and PSG Madrid. That game I'm very excited for, but I might actually just watch the City game because I love the way City plays. We'll see. It's going to be an amazing day. And then training later this afternoon. So life is good, man. Oh, I forgot how awesome preseason with a team is instead of training on my own all the time because it just is way more chaotic. And sometimes I don't know how often to train, how little to train, whereas here I'm like, I know what the schedule's like, I know what to do. It's so easy, I don't really have to think about it. Whew, okay. Time to sit in the boots. <coughs> These guys, for like 45 minutes, watch the first half. I'm probably gonna watch the Madrid game just because Madrid, PSG, that's gonna be some of the best players in the world. Man City, obviously, is amazing, but I just think it's gonna be a better game overall. Very excited for it. But they are all too well aware. Watching some of the best players in the world is like one of my favorite things in this entire universe. It's so good watching a team like PSG and a team like Madrid. Barca is still my favorite of all time, but hey, they're not they're not playing right now. Otherwise, I would have been watching that game. Sad they're in Europa League.
All right, so tip number two that I wanna talk about. So we talked about a little bit of the mental side, the leadership side. The second piece that I wanna talk about is the decision-making that I'm doing on the field. So as I'm watching the PSG Real Madrid game here at the apartment, I'm thinking about what are the things that I'm doing on the pitch that are really good? So I usually play outside back or winger. Those are kind of my two positions. Sometimes I stick in the midfield if I need to, but ideally I'd be somewhere on the wings. What does a really good wing player do? Well, I love watching Hakimi play. So Hakimi is the right wing back or right back of PSG. And what he does really well, he's got a ton of pace. He's not afraid to go forward. He beats players one-on-one, -on -one, but is also really, really intelligent with his decision-making. So when I'm thinking about what are the things that make me stand out as a player, it's knowing when to play the ball and knowing when to keep the ball. So if I need to keep the ball for one, two extra touches to get around a guy so then I can play a perfect pass, make my teammate look better, that's better to me. Obviously, if you have touch limits in a drill, that's different. But in a game-like situation, really understanding what are the least amount of touches that I can take, but also what is the best decision? And usually for me, the best decision comes over the amount of touches. So obviously I'm not talking like 10, 15 touches at a time. What I'm usually talking about is, do I have to take an extra touch to get that ball out of my feet so I can play the perfect pass instead of scuffing it or hitting it kind of weird in a way that's gonna make my teammate look bad or it's gonna give the ball away. So that's one of the, that's the second big piece is decision making when I have the ball is really, really important. That makes me a player that this professional team here wants to sign. Almost seven o'clock, so time to leave in about half an hour or so, 20, 25, 30 minutes. And I thought I would take the chance to talk about the third thing that is really, really important for um, really succeeding at trials. Like obviously we're talking about, we've already spoken about getting over the hump of you're good enough, right? So we're establishing that you're good enough to be on a trial. I'm good enough to be here. I'm good enough to play at this professional team. So what's next? What do you need to do in order to improve the chances of you actually making the team, right? So it's one thing to get the trial. It's another thing to actually make the team and get signed. And then it's a whole nother thing to stay in whatever league you're in or improve all that stuff. Positionally speaking, I really want to talk about what it means to have success in your position. So when I'm focusing on being a right winger or a right back or a left back or a left winger or even a center mid, whatever that is, I'm going through my head beforehand and not necessarily visualizing. That's for some people and not for some people, although it's been sort of pretty much accepted that visualization does help. It's a matter of thinking about all the things, positionally speaking, that I can do in order to make myself even more successful on the pitch. So as an outside back, what are my duties? My duty is to defend first. So that right winger, as a left back, that right winger is completely out of the picture. Number two is my attacking ability. So do I overlap? Do I get runs in behind? Do I... Uh, call for the ball? Do I really command that ball into my feet so I can play and showcase that ability? So it's all about how do you express yourself within that position and do all the things that you naturally do really well and show them that one thing that makes you better than the other guy maybe who's trying out in that left back position or trying out in that center mid position. Very, very important to express yourself and really be confident in your position, do the things that that position requires, especially within the system that you're playing. And then of course, you wanna be successful. So always locking down defensively and then being a threat offensively. Those are huge, at least in my success. So now I am going to chill here, maybe get some massage gun, and then I might actually go to the facility a little bit early. That way I can get the bike going. I actually did a lift in between the first and second sessions. I didn't show that to you guys, because again, I might, be able, uh, I might be able to show the lifting room or the gym. Eh, well, for another day, another vlog. Hopefully I'll be able to get the news to you guys ASAP and be able to tell you guys which one of the teams that I'm actually joining and signing for some pretty sweet stuff. So very, very cool. And uh, yeah, going to chill here for a little bit and then I'll be on my way to training. What I'm going to do is I'm not going to take the camera with me this time. I'm going to kind of do a recap of the entire day and explain sort of what a preseason looks like and how I'm continuing to succeed on the pitch, even though they've already said we want you and we're ready to sign the paperwork next week. All right, fam. I am absolutely exhausted. 
it's like almost one in the morning. I've just like finished showering, eating, home from training. We played 11 v 11 for the second session. Today's been a fantastic first day of preseason. I'm very excited with how things are gonna move forward and I'm really looking forward to playing with this group of guys. It's a great group of dudes and we've got a long way to go till we're game ready, but definitely on the right track. So hope those tips today really helped and help you in your quest for trials. Always comment down below if you have questions or DM me on Instagram or set up a Zoom call if you want as well. That's it for the video, guys. Thanks so much for joining me again. As always, be awesome. Take care. I'll see you guys in the next video.